Hey everyone, have I ever told you about the time a black bear attacked my platoon in the army? No? Watch on. Okay, so this one takes place in New Brunswick, an eastern province of Canada. And um, it was about 2008. I was getting towards the end of uh, my training as an officer uh, in the army. And I was um, taking a course that trains you to become a platoon commander. And and while on the ground still, not in uh, vehicles or other things like that. So it was uh, my turn to be in charge and I had a whole bunch of leadership responsibilities. I had to, um, we were offering this huge training area um, and I uh, had to get my platoon off of this defensive position where we were all dug in into trenches, get them off of there, move about 20, 30 kilometers away, take up a new position, and then get to a, um, a whole new position, occupy that area, set out the whole plans for it. And that's kind of the stage of what this uh, story starts. It's that we had started digging into this position and digging in a new defensive position with trenches and everything. And um, I was getting uh, about to do my orders. So I was doing my orders in terms of the routine, the like, the ongoing day-to-day -day tasks of continuing to establish this defensive position. So what the position looked like and why I have this uh, image here, this is actually Calgary, Alberta in Canada. Um, but the setting here is very similar to our defensive position in that we were up on a hill against right on the edge of this hill, as you can see, as it goes down towards the river there, there was a creek down at the bottom and a bridge just like that going across uh, the creek. So we were looking over and guarding this bridge uh, from up on this hill that went this way. And um, this is the very far edge of my trench line. I was actually back over this way um, doing these orders. And then this is the farthest left edge of my platoon right up against the trees and a forest. And you'll see why that's important soon. So uh, I started to do my orders. And I had my section commanders there and I was going over this, 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 this. And I was being assessed, I was being tested um, by a, uh, a superior by at the time, uh, captain at that time. And I was getting marked on all these different things. It's a pretty high stress environment. And all of a sudden it was gunfire everywhere. All of a sudden it was like, <laughs> everything firing, everything shooting at once. We were under attack. And I started to react. So I assumed it was part of the plan. And so I jumped up to get going. And the captain said, wait, wait, let me go check. So we all stopped, my section commanders and myself. When we wait, we're kind of like, what? What's going on? And the captain goes off for a while. And then eventually he comes back. A long time later, okay, the firing stops, things quiet down. Um, and then like he eventually comes back and he's kind of like shaking his head and he goes, well, you know what? I'll tell you, I won't tell you what he does. Um, because I'll tell you that at the very end of the story. So here's what I find out happened in that moment. Okay. What I find out is this, we had been digging in, right? And so it's a long process. You can't dig a trench in an hour. It takes, um, we're in uh, fire teams. So in two, uh, it's like partners. And um, in partners, it takes a long time for one person to be digging and one person to be watching with a rifle, whichever weapon that they have, um, as they continue to dig the trench down, 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 down. It's gonna end up being about five feet deep and um, you know maybe two, three feet wide. So. It's, it's a lot of dirt to move and camouflaging it and reinforcing it with different materials. So it takes a long time. And some, uh, most of the soldiers are doing the right thing, but the two soldiers at the very end of the line thought that they had a plan in order to get a little bit of extra sleep. Now, yeah, this was, we were getting very little sleep, sometimes one hour a night, sometimes no sleep at all at night. And we were desperate for sleep um, during these kind of two week at a time training exercises. Um, so people would try to find sleep whenever that they could, that they weren't being watched. And they thought that they could get away with it. 
So these two soldiers, we'll call them Higgins and Falco, they were the farthest trench on the line. Okay, so the platoon stretched all the way over to basically the edge of the bridge. And then here they were right next to the forest, right here. And they thought, hmm, well, if we do what we're supposed to, it'll take us a day, two days to dig, dig this trench down. But what we could do is instead of, everyone else is watching anyways too, we can, instead of having one of us guard as we should and look down on where we're supposed to be pointing and make sure there are no enemy comes, well, we could just both dig and we just won't watch it all and we'll both dig away and we'll be done twice as fast. And then with our extra time left over while everyone else is still finishing up digging, we'll get to sleep. We'll take turns sleeping. So that's their plan. But they didn't expect the title of this story. They didn't expect anyone to catch them or anything to catch them. So that's what they do. They start digging down. It seemed to be going well for them. They started, they both took their rifles, their assault rifles, and they put them on the side of the trench, up on top. Now, we had blank ammunition, so it wasn't shooting anything. We also had a, a muzzle cover so that it wouldn't shoot even any kind of gunpowder out of there. Um, so <clears throat> what we had was it would make the sound if you shot, but it wouldn't shoot anything out of the barrel, okay? Um, and we would get attacked by uh, other soldiers, uh, acting soldiers, uh, soldiers acting as enemies, and they would um, come and kind of try to attack and get through our line. And then um, sometimes they get beaten back or a variety of things would happen to keep you on your toes. But they chanced it, these two guys, Higgins and Balco, and they thought, okay, well, so they put their rifles on the sides of their trench and they get digging down, down, and they're down to about four feet now, four feet deep until they're both digging away like this. The rifles are both up in the side. They don't see anything around. They're completely focused down. So they're kind of like, as you can see my body now, of that everything below here was down in the hole. And then their upper bodies were just up above. And so they're digging down, they're digging down. And at one part, they, they both hear. And what do they do? They look up. And there is a black bear right in their face. It's right, it's almost standing on one of their rifles and it's looking down at them like, what you doing down there? And it's sniffing them going. <laughs> and this Higgins is first to react. Higgins does this, lets out this scream. This was a big, uh, this is a big soldier, this big, like strong man. And he just, but in that moment, Fight or flight, he went for flight. He lets out this little scream of this kind of like, ah! And he just jumped out of the trench line. Higgins jumps, just flings himself out of the trench and goes so from here. And the bear is here going. Higgins is next, right there in his face. And he just jumps away past Balco, catapults himself out of the trench and just runs this way. And runs way down the trench line running, yelling like, bear, bear, and he goes this way. Balco takes a different approach. Balco then goes like, ah, he chooses fight. So he reaches over and the bear is now kind of alarmed. Balco grabs his rifle, switches it from single shot to fully automatic rapid fire. And remember, it's not gonna shoot anything, but it does make the sound of the real bullets. And he flips it onto rapid fire, holds his rifle out as soon as, as close to the bear as he can, and just lets out the ex entire magazine. Right at his face, he goes <laughs> like this. Now the bear goes from looking down at him like this to going, Wah! the bear freaks out. It goes, Wah! stands up like this, and then starts, goes, loses its balance up on his two hind legs. And it then, so it's like, yes, here. And it then goes toppling down that hill, down this hill, falls over and goes boom, 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 down the hill of this. And he's still going, Falco's still going, Rah! and the rest of the line starts going, everyone's shooting, 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 all down towards this bear. As it goes like rolling, 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 all down this hill. 
it gets to the bottom of the hill, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, what have I gotten into? And it gets onto its floors and it's, it just runs off like this, away off into the trees down at the bottom of the hill. And the whole line is now shooting though, because these few trenches here can all see this, but everyone else is past some thickets and they can't see what's going on. They're starting to shoot in order because they think that there's a whole bunch of enemies everywhere. So the whole line starts shooting and shooting and shooting. So eventually, right after this, my uh, boss, my instructor there, the captain, had come out, checked this out, gotten the story, seen what had happened. And so he comes walking back over to my orders. And I'm still, I still at this point had no idea what was happening. Right, just kind of wondering, like, am I in trouble here? Was I supposed to react there? Why did he tell me not to? And he comes back and he's shaking his head. And he just goes, continue. <laughs> As though nothing has happened at all. And I still hadn't been told the story. He didn't tell me the story then. So he just went, continue. And we went right back into the assessment and testing me on my orders and things like that. So. I ended up passing that and continued on. Sure enough, I would become an officer myself and uh, moving on through training like that. But I found out later that hmm, Higgins and Balco had tried to pull a fast one on the rest of us there. And they paid the price for not thinking about what might come out of these woods right beside them there. Hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time.